Welcome to the Curious Giraffe Show for kids of all ages, where there's always a song and no question is wrong. So we're going to start with a song that came to me in my sleep. And in my sleep, it was a curious giraffe that was asking all these questions. But when I woke up right away, I wrote it down and I sang it into a recording. And we're going to teach that song now so that everybody can sing it. And we might make up new verses as we ask our questions. But the chorus goes like this. Share one big sky. Share one big sky. Give the world a big high five. Oops. We're different and we know it, but we still get along. Cause we can all share and we can all care. We're different, but we all belong. There you go. So this is gonna start with verses of asking questions and join in with me if you know it and listen if you don't, but have a good time. So giraffe is gonna ask eagle first. Giraffe looked over at Eagle and said, Why was I born to walk? Why were you born to fly? Eagle just shrugged and gave a high five. Hey, we all share one big sky. Oh, yeah, stand up if you want. Share one big sky, share one big sky. Give the world a big high five. Yeah, if there's an end, we know it, but we all get along. Because we can all share. Spots. Why do you have stripes? Zebra just shrugged and said, We come in all types, but we all share one big sky. Oh, yeah. Stand up. Share one big sky, share one big sky. Give the world a big high five. Yeah, we're different and we know it, but we all get along. Because we can all share and we can all care. We're different, but we all get along. Giraffe looked over at Jaguar and said, Why am I so tall? Why are you so fast? Jaguar just shrugged and said, It's all a blast, but we all share one big sky. Oh, yeah. Share one big sky, share one big sky. Give the world a big high five. Yeah, we're different and we know it, but we all get along. Because we can all share. This is the new verse, so I'm going to look at my words. Giraffe looked over at the people and said, Why do some... I'm going to sing it by myself so you can hear the words, because I'm even new at it, okay? Okay. Giraffe looked over at the people and said, Why do some folks have plenty when some never get enough? Couldn't they all just share their stuff like we all share one big sky? Oh, yeah, everybody. Share one big sky, share one big sky. Give the world a big high five. Yeah, we're different and we know it, but we all get along. Because we can all share and we can all care. We're different, but we all belong. Nice job, everybody. Have a seat. And I'm going to rest my guitar. And I wanted to explain to you that most of us don't have giraffes whispering in our ear and asking questions. But I decided the giraffe would be a very nice mascot. And so the giraffe is going to be like that voice inside your heads you might imagine a giraffe whispering to you, gee, why is that happening? Where did that come from? How can I get there? Whatever questions come to mind, 
the giraffe is representing that thinking part of you that wants to put those feelings into words and wants to bring them to other people to try to find out. So, Lila, would you like to hold Curious Giraffe? Okay. There you go. Okay, you sit up tall. That's it, because Curious Giraffe likes to listen. Now, I just wanted to ask you, I have an idea in my mind, but can you think of why a giraffe is a fun animal to think of for when you're curious about things? Because it has a long neck. And what's the advantage of having a long neck? It always reads things. I, louder, speak a little louder. He can see things. He can see things, more things, right? He can grab things. He like, can he touch can... and pull things. Yeah. Awesome. Higher up. He can like see more of the view and yeah. the world and everything. Yeah. So this song has a whole lot about sharing. And I wanted to come back to that question that giraffe whispers in my head sometimes. Why do some people have so much and some have so little? Couldn't they just share everything? And that's a hard question that grown-ups and kids of all ages wrestle with. And I just thought I wanted to open that up and see if you have any thoughts about this what grown-ups call inequality of resources it, that some yeah what's your um, idea I'm Save probably it. guessing because like um just saying like frankly I see a lot of adults and children and if you go into a store and you want to buy something and it just gets me to think why do people have so less and why do people so have have so little mm -hmm. And the reason I think is money, because not everyone has money, and some people might be poor, and they may not be able to have money, but it also gets me to think, why can't poor people get jobs of their own and make their own money? Why can't they just do that instead of just sitting there, sitting around? I mean... Okay, any... Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other thoughts? Well... Um, I forgot to let you introduce yourselves to me and to each other. And there's one, so excuse me, tell us your name. Oh, I'm Xavier. Xavier. And your name? Lila. And your name? Maxwell. And your name? Monet. And your name? Maya. And your name? Raven. OK. So thank you, Xavier. And Raven, what were you thinking? Um. Well, I think it might be harder to um, get a job when you're already poor because, like, you don't make a, be a really great impression because you already, like, mm. you might not be able to take, like, bathe, so you might not be as clean. Mm. So, like, the when you're going to a job interview, um, they might, like... So that could get in the way, huh? Yeah. yeah, and then money is actually a big part of our culture, and some people are rich because they get really great jobs and get a lot of money, and they don't know what to do with that money, and sometimes instead of sending it to charity, they just use it all up. Okay, you have both touched on really big issues. I'm going to bring it closer to us and ask, can you think of a time that either you shared something or that you saw someone share something. I'm going to I'm going to do waiting a minute and everybody will get a chance that I'm going to go on Monet next. Um I had um cookies today and I um was going to save them but I was um I was going to eat them all by myself, but then I remembered that my mom was like, okay, you got to share them with your brothers. And so I was like, okay, here you go, here you go. Um, there was two left, mm -hmm. and I already had four that morning. So I was like, okay, you two can have the cookies. There you go. That's very personal. That was today. Great. Anyone else have, remember a time? Maya? Well, um, my... 
My family had stuff that we didn't need anymore, and so we um, gave, gave it to charity. Okay, where did, do you know where you took it? Uh, I forget. Okay, but that's, so you remember sharing what you didn't need. Any, anyone else? Yes, Savior. Um, so, um, usually a lot of times I share with my brother and my sister, mm -hmm. and so, yeah, it's probably like my everyday life. When you have a big family, you get a lot of practice. Yeah. What are other places? Our families are where we first practice sharing. Yeah. That is really true for pretty much all of us. Where else do we practice sharing? Um, Church. Church school? sometimes. School. Definitely um, school. I would think. School. Yeah. yeah. Everywhere. Um, Salvation Army. The Salvation Army. You give away your things uh -huh. that you don't want, so it's kind of like sharing. It's like, I'm using it so someone else can have it. Great, great. So someone else can have it if you're not using it. So we have a business here in Amherst. Have you ever heard of the Amherst Survival Center? Yes. I Okay. So, um, so our next show, one of the things I really am grateful for is the Amherst Survival Center. At one time in my life, I worked hard, but my income was still very small. And the Amherst Survival Center was very helpful to me and my family. And... I now am like some of your families that I realize from time to time, gee, I could share some of these things with someone else. We have more than we need, and I can take it there. But I'm going to turn this page, and I want you to know that next time, a friend of mine who volunteers at the Amherst Survival Center, she doesn't get paid. She does it because she is grateful to be able to do something to help other people. Because that's how I feel. I see the need and I go, oh, I don't think there's anything I can do. And then somebody says, oh, you could. Here's an idea. And that's what my friend does. She goes over there to help. And I wanted to just see if you have any questions you can think of today so that when next time when we come, um, we can just start. And then we can think of new questions, too. But raise your hand if you have an idea of what you would want to ask her. And I will jot it down. Did you have an idea? Uh, um, what do they do? OK, so first question is a good one. I'll come down the line. What Save can we it. do to help? And do you have another one? Could we help with volunteering? Thank you. Okay. Another question? Um, is it worth helping? Is it worth it, like helping out? Is it worth it to her? Well, is it worth help? it to all of the people uh -huh. in the community? That's a trick. I will be interested in her answer. Yes. How many of them are there? Like, how many people help, or how many people come there? How many of the places? How many other places like that are there? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Did you have a, a last thought? No. I Anybody think it's have good. a last thought? And this is very good. For I want to say something. Sure. It's not a question. Okay. But it's. Funny how you came up with this idea, because in my class for writing, we're writing essays, okay. and mine happens to be about um, how we should help organizations like this. Oh. And um, wow. I actually added in some of my evidence that I, I've i um, given and closed for the Survival Center, of course. My goodness. So she, you've been gathering evidence. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, this is, I love the interrelatedness. Oh, we volunteer at our hospital. Of everything. Um, say that louder, please. Um, we volunteer at our church, um, not very long. Yeah, not very so long. So would you church. explain to the rest of us about, um, I, I know about it, but they um, might not. It's like, uh, you know, like the soup kitchens? Um, it's like, you know the soup kitchens where you cook the food and they hand it out to mm -hmm. um, the people? Well, um, I have actually cooked there a few times, and the thing is, is that they, you do, like, you can cook what you want to cook-ish, like, you stick to a straight down menu, but, you, but the kinds you can cook vary, and it's actually very fun to cook. Um, so did you get to help cook the day you helped, or did you help oh, serve, or what helped, did you do? I cooked and served, and the fun part is when you eat, is when after you cook and serve, you can eat some of it. I think the last time I went there, they cooked like a meat lasagna, mm. and it was good. <laughs> and I know from going there that for people who like meat, they have meat dishes, and for people who vegetarian. cannot or choose not to eat meat, there are vegetarian. There was a vegetarian. Yes, and Savior. It is very um, rewarding. Like, I like to see people. I like to help out people. That's one of the things I like to do. Right. And it's very fun, even though, I mean, you might want to say that, oh, cooking and stuff is not fun, but I, I find it fun to cook. Like, it's, and... Sometimes they cook desserts, and it kind of varies on what they want to do. And some some days, and it's just really good to help out. All right, you just made me think of a question that I would like to ask her, and that is, how do they decide what to fix? Because as a cook in my family, I sometimes run out of ideas. So my question is, how do you decide what to cook? That could be for Not Bread Alone or for the Survival Center. Okay. So now I think we'll save these questions for next time. And what I'm going to do, well, I think I'll leave that right there for now. And... I would like us to stand up and have a stretch, a little exercise before a story about our topic. So this is called Exercise Your Body, Exercise Your Mind. So it goes like this. You can join me, all of you, get active, get up, move. Mm. Okay, ready? Exercise your body, exercise your mind. Learn about the world around and exercise kind this way. Exercise your body, exercise your mind. Learn about the world around and exercise kind other way. Exercise your body, exercise your mind. Learn about the world around and exercise kind. Very nice. Okay, have a seat because in my box, which is really just designed to make you curious, I have a story today. So different days, it will have different things in it. Okay. And what did you notice from the cover? Somebody noticed before I... Monet? It was about in the, looks like about 18 people. This is called... Yep. It looks like Sacagawea. It does look like her. Um, if, if I found this picture on the inside, I could tell you who it is. They identify each of these women um, by their tribes. And this book is called The Spirit of Indian Women. And here's the story that I found in it on this page. And actually, here's a picture of another Indian woman. And this is... White Hawk. That's her name, White Hawk. Why was she called that? They don't explain that, but what they do explain is how corn came to be given. So the way that the ancestors tell the story is that long ago, two hunters had gone out hungry, but they found a deer 
and they cooked some of the venison over a fire. And while they were sitting there, much to their surprise, a woman came down from the clouds, and she came right toward them. And they were in awe. And they thought, she must have smelled the smoke from our cooking food. We must share some with her. So they said, would you like to have some of our meat? And she smiled and thanked them and shared the meal with them. And then she said, because of your kindness, when you were hungry, you shared some of what you had, and there was enough for all of us. Now I'm going to return that gift that you gave me to you and to all of your people. One year from today, bring your tribe here and there will be a gift for you. Well, the two hunters were so excited and they brought home some of the meat for their tribe and they told them about the mysterious woman. And the tribe said, well, where did she go? Why didn't you bring her back with you? And they said, she went back into the clouds. And they said, oh, oh, so what were her instructions? What were her instructions? Do you remember? The days come back a year later. Okay, nice and loud. To um, the instructions were to take, um, uh, the, to take the tribe back to the place where they met a year later. A year later. So they had to keep track of time. And they worked out a system. And one year later, they came back to that spot. They actually made it a very special spot, and they went back regularly to mark it with stones, to leave offerings of gratitude for the, just the gift of having met her. But they were curious what would be there as her gift to them. On the appointed day, they came. And for the first time ever, right where her hand, her right hand had touched the earth, corn was growing. And right where her left hand was touching the earth, there were beans. And both of those foods come with so many more seeds on them that can grow even more and grow even more that her gift to them was that they wouldn't be hungry, that there would always be enough to share. So that's the story that I wanted to share today. And I have a song about that, actually, that I wrote after reading that story. And it goes like this. Where does corn come from? Tell us, where does corn come from? It starts out. Where does corn come from? Tell us, where does corn come from? It comes from being generous, my daughter and my son. It comes from being welcoming wherever come from. You can join me. Where do friends come from? Tell us where do friends come from? They come from being generous. They come from being generous. My daughter and my son. They come from being welcoming. They come from being welcoming wherever you may go. And in this way the wise ones say Friendships grow and grow. Very nice. And the last verse is, where does peace come from? Where does peace come from? Tell us, where does peace come from? It comes from being generous, my daughter and my son. It comes from being welcoming wherever. Thank you.
you. Beautiful singing. And now we're going to wish for all the people to have enough, to have sharing, kind hearts, and minds thoughtful enough to look for ways to take care of each other. So we're going to end with one last chorus of Share One Big Sky. Giraffe looked over at the people and said, Why do some folks have plenty when some never have enough? Couldn't they all just share their stuff like we all share one big sky? Oh, yeah. Stand up. Share one big sky. Share one big sky. Give the world a big high five. Yeah, we're different and we know it, but we all get along. Because we can all share and we can all care. We're different, but we all Thank you for being a part of the Curious Kids crew, and thank you to our audience for joining us today with the Curious Giraffe Show. We'll see you again soon, all of you. Do, 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 do.